So this video covers the basics of Microsoft Project. Now before I get started, let me mention if you're interested, you can follow along with this video using the sample file in the description. Also, you don't have to remember all the things that we're going to walk through. We've got a cheat sheet that covers a lot of them. Uh, you can download it at projectprep.org tools. Also, one more thing, if you are interested in some free prep materials to help you prepare for the PMP or the CAPM exam, you can download those at projectprep.org. Okay, so imagine this scenario. You've been tasked to put together a project schedule and a cost estimate for a very simple factory construction project. We're going to use that as our example. So now let's dive into Microsoft Project. The first thing you should know is on the left side of the screen are your project activities, the work you plan to get done. And on the right side of the screen is your Gantt chart. That's a visualization of your project schedule. And on our factory project, we've grouped our work into categories, so it's easy for us to understand, like the foundation, the walls, utilities, and so on. Now let's say we need to add some additional work, like landscaping. We'll go to the bottom, type in landscaping. What you'll notice is it's rolled up under roofing. We want it in its own category. So we're going to select landscaping, and then we're going to outdent that task so it's in its own section. We want landscaping to be its own group. Now underneath landscaping, we're going to do a few things. We're going to uh, grade the site to get it ready. We're going to build some hardscapes, like uh, some ni nice rock formations. And then we're going to plant some trees and shrubs. And what you'll notice though here is that those are now listed in all their own categories. We want them to roll up under landscaping. So we're going to select those three tasks and indent them and put them underneath landscaping. So they're all together in one group. So we try to group our work to make it easy for us to understand. Now, the next step we're going to perform is going to seem kind of simple, but it really enables one of the most powerful features of Microsoft Project. It could save you hours and hours of time as you maintain your schedule. So what we're going to do is set the task mode from manually scheduled to auto scheduled for all of our activities. So once we select it for one, we can drag and drop it, uh, drag and drop it down our list of activities. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is set the durations for our activities, how long we expect these things to take. Now, just a tip here, as you come up with these estimates, try not to do it just on your own and involve the project team members, the people actually doing the work, uh, get their expert advice and input. Your goal is to come up with the best estimate possible. Also, when we record durations, we're only going to do it for the lowest level activities, those things not in bold. So essentially, the categories themselves are not really work. It's just the things underneath it. The category is just a way to group it. It's all of our lowest level activities, the things that are not in bold, we're going to set durations for. Okay, so let's say surveying a lot is going to take five days. Digging the ground, let's say 10, and laying the concrete, five days. Okay, then we'll go down to the next section, the walls. Maybe purchasing the steel, that takes two days. Installing the steel columns, five, and then maybe actually doing the framing would take 10. Okay, now let's go down to utilities. Let's say installing the electrical and plumbing, we'll give that seven days each. And then the roofing, to install the roof, it's 10 days. And then we've got to check it for leaks after, that's maybe two. And then we'll grade the site as we landscape, two days. Build the hardscapes, that's five. And then planting trees and shrubs, let's say that's five days as well. So now that we've defined all of our project activities and we've given them durations, so how long we think they're going to take, now what we've got to do is tell Microsoft Project the right order of events. So what's the sequence of these project activities? We want to make sure they're done in the right order. And so what we've got to do now is add predecessors. Predecessors are activities that must come before something else. And we've got to tell Microsoft Project what those predecessors are. An example in the real world is that you've got to write a document before you make edits to it. So writing would be a predecessor. Now, just like with durations, when we define predecessors, we're only going to set those predecessors for the lowest level activities, those things not in bold. We don't want to set them for the category, just the lowest ones. So let's start with our list up above. So let's say that we're in the foundation and maybe surveying the lot, we could do that first. That might be the first task on the project. And so it actually wouldn't have a predecessor. There's nothing that would come before it. Now with digging the ground though, 
We can't do that until we've surveyed the lot. We survey the lot, and then we dig the ground. And so what we're going to do is in digging the ground, that predecessor is going to be number two. And those numbers correspond to the numbers on the left-hand side of the, uh, the activity pane. So digging the ground, the predecessor to that is surveying the lot, number two. Now what you'll notice is if you look at your Gantt chart after we define that relationship, you'll see that surveying the lot and digging the ground are now connected with the arrow. One has to happen before another. And that's important. We've got to let Microsoft Project know what these relationships are. Okay, so let's walk through the remainder of the list and talk about some of these relationships. And so laying the concrete, let's say that we can't do that until we've dug the ground. So the predecessor for laying the concrete is going to be number three, which is digging. We dig, and then we lay the concrete. And again, if we go back and update the Gantt chart so we see all of it, we can now see those relationships. We have to survey the lot, dig the ground, and lay the concrete. And remember, those numbers in the predecessor column reflect the numbers on the left-hand side of the task pane. And now let's go to the walls. Okay, let's say with purchasing steel, maybe we can do that at the start of the project. There's no need to do some of the other activities, so we could leave that as, a, as blank. That could be something we start with right away. Now, installing the steel columns, we could actually have two predecessors. So we actually have to purchase the steel. That has to happen, which is number six. And then we also have to lay the concrete. We can't actually start installing the steel columns until the concrete has been laid and cured. Now, let's look at the next one, framing the walls. We can't frame the walls until we've installed the steel column, so the predecessor there is going to be seven. Now, let's look at utilities, installing electrical and plumbing. We actually have to frame the walls before we do either of those. So the predecessors for these installations are going to be number eight, framing the walls. We frame the walls, and then we can install those utilities. Now, when it comes to roofing, we've actually got two predecessors we could probably list there. Uh, we could say number 10, we've got to install the electrical, and we've got to install the plumbing. And obviously, to check for leaks, we have to install the roof first, so that predecessor is going to be number 13. We've got to install the roof and then check it for leaks. And I'll just finish up in landscaping. With grading the site, maybe we can do that you know, right after we survey the lot. It doesn't have to be after the, you know, some of the other activities like uh, framing the walls, putting in the utilities, or roofing. Now, with building the hardscapes and planting the trees, we can't do that until we've graded the site, number 16. Okay, now that I've listed all my project activities, I've added durations, so estimates for how long I think they're going to take, and I've added predecessors, which define the right order or sequence of events, what I've got to do next is assign resources. I've got to tell Microsoft Project what labor and material resources we need to get this work done. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to the Gantt chart dropdown on the left-hand side of the page and click on the resource sheet. That's where I'm going to add in my labor and my materials. So let's say that we have three team members, Larry, Curly, and Mo. So let's type in their name in the first three rows of the sheet. And then I'll put steel at the bottom because that's my material that I want to track. Now the first thing I've got to do is after I enter in those labor and material resources is change the type for steel from work to material. Now what I'm going to do next is then take Larry, Curly, and Mo and assign hourly rates to them. So for Larry, let's say he's $15, Curly is $20, and Mo is $25. And for steel, let's say that we're going to pay by the ton, we're pricing it by unit, so it's $600 per ton of steel. Now what I want to do now is go back to the Gantt chart view by clicking on the Gantt chart button. And what I should see is if I go to the resource names column and I select one of the cells, a drop down should appear. And I can now see those resources listed. And I can just use those check boxes to assign resources um, to a task. But what I want to do is assign resources to more than one activity at once. So let's select survey a lot, dig the ground, and purchase steel. And then I can go to the resource tab and click on the Assign Resources button. And let's assign these three to Larry, so I'll select Larry's name, and then click Assign, 
And if I close out of this, I should see Larry assigned to those three activities. And I also should see Larry's name appear on the Gantt chart there. Okay, next let's assign activities to Curly. So I'll select laying the concrete, uh, installing the electrical, and installing the roof, and grading the site all to Curly. So I select those four, uh, identify Curly, click on his name, and then click Assign. Now I should see Curly appear in the Resource Names column, as well as on the Gantt chart. And then let's select or assign the remaining activities to Mo. Now that we've assigned our labor resources, let's assign the material resources. So let's say that the um, in the purchase steel activity, we want to designate how much steel is going to be needed. So I can select that activity, use the drop down, and then check steel. Now what's going to happen is it's next to steel, it's going to just show one. So it's telling me that right now uh, it's only calculating one unit of steel or one ton. So I can double click on the activity if I need to change it. And let's say I need 10 tons of steel. When I go to that resources tab, instead of it saying one, let's type in 10, 10 tons of steel. Now, when Microsoft Project costs out my project, it's gonna assume that I'm not buying just one ton of steel or one unit, but 10 tons. Now, one other thing we need to discuss at this point are those little red men that are appearing in my first column. What this is telling me is that I've got resources that are over allocated meaning they're assigned to work on multiple things at once. What I've got to do is fix that by leveling the resources. So if I go to the resource tab, I can click on the level all button. And what this is going to do is adjust the scheduling of my activities to account for those over allocations. So that Mo in this case is only assigned to work on one thing. And then after he finishes that, he moves to the next one. Leveling resources will adjust and address those over allocations. Okay, now that I've made several resource adjustments, what I want to do is adjust the Gantt chart view so I can see the entire project. So if I go to the View menu, I'll click on the Entire Project button so I can now, once again, see the entire Gantt chart in my view. Okay, so the next step is where a little bit of magic happens. Now that we've defined the activities of our project, we've added durations and predecessors, and we've assigned resources, we can figure out what the cost estimate would be for our project. So what I'm going to do is move my separator over to the right a little bit so I can see the last column in my table. And I'm going to add the cost column in by just typing in cost and selecting it. Now, this is where Microsoft Project comes up with my estimate. So it's, it knows based on the duration of activities and the cost of resources assigned what the estimate would be to get that work done. And then it rolls up those costs to each of the categories. Now just for a moment, let me revisit the task mode column. Something important I want to illustrate here. So if you recall, earlier in the setup process, we changed the task mode for all of our activities to manually scheduled to automatically scheduled. And let me right now illustrate why that was such an important step. So let's say that as we survey the lot, we realize it's not going to take five days. It's actually going to take seven. Now if you recall, surveying the lot is a predecessor to lots of other activities. It's really the thing we're going to do first. And so if we adjust that activity from five to seven days, what's going to happen is the Microsoft Project is going, then going to push out all the activities that are supposed to come after that. Rather than us having to go every line through the project schedule and change the dates, the uh, predecessors, because those relationships are built in, help us make those adjustments automatically. It's going to save us a lot of time as we maintain our schedule and as we update it as the project gets completed. Okay, let's finish up our schedule with a few remaining activities now. One thing I notice is that right now it says that my project is going to start on September 12th, 2018. That's a problem because that was over a year and a half ago. That's not where we are today. So what I want to do is go to the Project tab and click on Project Information and change the start date to January 27th, 2020. You can change it to a date that's somewhere in the near future for you. But for me, I'm going to set it as January 27th, 2020. Now what's going to happen is that it's going to set that as my start date. And because I've built my predecessors in and I'm automatically scheduling my activities, 
Microsoft Project is going to adjust all the dates for my activities appropriately. Now, as my project gets underway, one of the things that I can do is mark the activities that have been complete. So I can add a percent complete column, and then I can use a percentage to designate how much of the activity is finished. So I have an idea of what I'm working on now and what's already done. Now, I'm not sure if you notice this or not, but one of the weird things right now about my project schedule is if I look at the costs and the duration of activities, they're really only summed by category. What would be helpful is a summary at the top of my project that adds everything up. So what are the costs of the entire project and the durations of all the activities combined? And so if I go to the Format menu in my Gantt Chart Tools section, I can click on the Project Summary task and the Outline Number to give me a summary up at the top and then to also number all of my activities so they're easy to reference. So at this point, we've put together a pretty good schedule. We haven't used all the features in Microsoft Project, probably the ones that get used most often. I right, hope this was helpful. Good luck on your projects.